Here's a scary experiment for you. Imagine 10 nuclear bombs going off where you live. That's a lot of destruction, right? Now imagine 100 nuclear explosions going off. Seems almost unfathomable. Did you know that 65 million years ago, the asteroid or comet nicknamed the Chicxulub that destroyed all of the dinosaurs is equivalent to 10 billion nuclear bombs going off at once? Just let that sink in for a second. The destruction at such a massive scale nearly ended all life on Earth, sending an entire section of the animal kingdom to the Jurassic World franchise, ultimately making Chris Pratt richer. But what's even scarier is that we are in a position where a massive asteroid of that scale and larger could hit us for the second time, a Chicxulub 2.0. So how prepared are we for this possible comet of Armageddon? What will happen if this comet hits? How much time do we have? Keep watching this video to find out. Because to find these answers, I have to take you 65 million years in the past. Forget about looking up for a second. Let's look back. Long before Steven Spielberg thought about turning the T-Rex and all its brethren into a box office success, actual dinosaurs were roaming the Earth. This was called the Age of the Dinosaurs, or the Mesozoic Era. It was a lustrous time, with lots of tall trees and green grass and unbelievable amounts of water. But out of nowhere, unknown to these quasi-reptilian beings, an asteroid, the likes of which the Earth had never seen, appeared in the sky. Scientists are unsure what the exact size of the asteroid was, but it is believed to have been 10 kilometers in diameter or 6.2 miles. Relatively small compared to the size of the Earth, but the consequences, the consequences were far from small. When the asteroid collided with the Earth, specifically at where would be known as the Yucatan Peninsula, the impact caused an explosion equivalent to 100 teratons of TNT going off. The blast velocity moved at approximately 20 kilometers per second, forming large amounts of wind all coming from the point of collision at about 1,000 kilometers per hour. It also formed a hole or crater 100 miles wide, creating a pool of molten rock and unbelievably hot gas. The crater caused a tectonic shift that had an impact on the sea, causing massive waves and mega tsunamis of over 100 meters or 330 feet, spreading many kilometers from the blast site. Earthquakes and ripples in the sea triggered seismic events at an unprecedented scale. But it gets worse, so much worse because the impact caused debris from the asteroid and from the Earth to go back up, going back into the atmosphere, some of them escaping Earth's orbit, but many of them going back down, getting heated to incandescence while re-entering the Earth and causing more collisions around the Earth, igniting wildfires estimated to have destroyed about 70% of the trees on Earth. Any large animals alive at the time faced extinction, because if the collision itself didn't take you out, the wildfires would, and if that didn't, the poisonous dust that resulted from the impact would. This dust covered the whole Earth and blocked out the sun for at least a decade. So if you didn't die from the toxic air even, you'd die from hunger because the food chain would have been disrupted and very few plants would grow, herbivores wouldn't feed, and predators, well large predators, wouldn't be able to hunt. 70% of life on Earth ceased to exist, the only survivors being the quick adapters, the avian ancestors, the insects, and a few resilient plants. It took a long time for the Earth to recover from the hit, and even longer to rebuild its vast network of living things. So by now, you're starting to understand how devastating it would be to have that all happen again. Our large cities, our towns, our homes, even Disney World would be destroyed. But that's if the asteroid or comet is the same size as the Chicxulub. Anything bigger than 96 kilometers or 60 miles will be enough to destroy the Earth, breaking it to pieces. So, what's our fate? Well, unlike the dinosaurs, we won't just look up one day and see the asteroid above us. We'll be able to identify an asteroid of that size if it was coming from millions of miles away. And we've been able to do that since the mid-1900s. But don't relax just yet, because even though we may be aware of an incoming meteor, there's still the question of what we're going to do about it. How can the Earth defend itself? There are two ways this could go. One would be to send a shuttle out there and eventually launch a nuclear bomb at the asteroid, blowing it to cinders. But we would have to do this properly. One has to cause this controlled explosion a far distance away from the Earth, so that the debris from the destroyed asteroid doesn't damage the Earth. The second way would be to send a shuttle to disrupt the course of the asteroid. This process is called asteroid deflection, hitting the asteroid at specific points that will be able to redirect its course and send it far away from the Earth. Merely hitting the asteroid by just a tiny bit could make a huge difference in space. Are there any such programs in place for these kinds of situations? Thankfully, there are. Quite a few, actually. There's the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, at NASA. A NASA space mission focused on testing our planet's defense against potential collision from asteroids or meteors. A 
space probe was launched in November of 2021 to deliberately crash into the minor planet moon Dimorphos of the twin asteroid Didymus to see if it can redirect the course of an asteroid. This shuttle will collide with the asteroid and hypothetically send it flying in the opposite direction. If this goes well, we can rest easy knowing we can avert such a crisis. The collision is set to occur on the 26th of September, 2022. Travels in space take time, so don't hope for quick results. But the outcome on this experiment will be divulged eventually, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the information. It should be noted that Dimorphos is of no threat to the Earth. It was simply chosen for this experiment, so you don't have to worry about the experiment going wrong and then Dimorphos hurtling towards the Earth. But is there any asteroid heading for Earth that's capable of causing global devastation? The answer is yes. Based on an updated report on threat analysis conducted by the Near Earth Object Coordination Center, or the NEOCC, a European space agency dedicated to analyzing threats like these, they found that there was an asteroid about 1.1 kilometers in diameter, or two-thirds of a mile that's supposedly heading right for Earth. The asteroid is called the 1950 DA. It's the largest of all the near-Earth objects that are likely to hit our planet. Originally discovered in 1950, the asteroid disappeared and wasn't seen again until the early 2000s, almost half a century later. If that asteroid were to hit, it would cause widespread devastation, as well as a massive change in the Earth's climate. Those near to the impact would have to live at least 5 kilometers underground to survive. Having a limited supply of food, they wouldn't be able to resurface for at least 10 years. So how long do we have before the 1950 DA hits? Well, you can rest easy knowing that the 1950 DA won't show up in our solar system for at least 800 years. The possible collision is likely to occur on March 16th, 2880, and the odds of it hitting our planet, which was initially thought to be 1 in 300, is now 1 in 50,000. We shouldn't worry about it anytime soon, but understand that space works a lot differently, and a big enough asteroid that was miles away from the Earth's position could hit some form of interference that alters its direction and sends it towards us. In the end, an asteroid collision is very possible. The asteroid known as Apophis that's estimated to have a diameter of 370 meters already poses a serious threat to Earth, worrying the likes of Elon Musk as well as NASA. The worst part is, Earth currently has no real defense against such calamities. We are all bowling pins waiting to be hit. Maybe it's time we start investing in underground bunkers. Be sure to like and leave a comment on what you think your chances are in an event like this. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks again for watching.